Hey folks, welcome back to The Portable Gamer. Welcome back to American Truck Simulator. This is the 1.35 patch. Did I say that right? 1.35, yeah, I said that right. 1.35 patch, and we are in Los Angeles. We started, as you can see, there's been a bit of a reversal of fortune. We're back at square one. So we are uh, made a new garage, made a new home base, and it is in Los Angeles rather than Phoenix. We do own this truck. And that's all we own. We own this truck, one really beat up garage. We're starting over. So let's uh, let's take a look at one thing first. And as you can see, the map I think is is continuing to fill out, and it is beginning to take on more of the look of ETS. I feel like when the when this game first dropped a couple years back now, when it was just California and Nevada, I want to say, yeah, and they added Arizona. DLC for New Mexico, various things, but I feel like they've just been adding, they've been filling in these areas. And this is beginning to look more like ETS to me. Initially, it was a little a little sparse. So 1.35, they do add some additional roads. I like that. They also changed the way the hired workers work. Uh, there we go. And we've got some additional features in, sorry, it took me a second to start the truck. We've got some additional features in the way that the trucks, uh, as far as there's a, a separate electrical and accessory system now, and then you can start your truck. So there's a there's an ignition and then a starter, which are two separate functions in cars and trucks, but in up to 1.34, it was folded into one button, right? Click it once, turns the electrical on, click it again, it starts the truck. Now you can assign it to two separate buttons. So, uh, so what else is different? The game is running on DX11 now. That's a good thing. I think ultimately that is a good thing. Now, oh, I'm going to stay positive in this video. I really, really am. And I've actually recorded this video three times, four times, because I want to stay positive. And I had my team, I had the fam do a quick review of some of the, the early videos that I recorded for 1.35. And they said, nah, not quite, you know, pump the positivity, son. And so I shall. So I can tell you that, you know, getting getting to DX11 in 2019 is maybe not, you know, necessarily something to be that proud of. But get to DX11, they did. And the game is playing faster than I think it, it ever has before. We are in a city. We're in Los Angeles. And we are at between 60 and 70 FPS. That's pretty, pretty good. Now we'll circle back to DX11 and, and what it does to the game in a moment. Let's continue talking about the good things. So the driver system is different now. I guess there's more drivers and you can be a little bit more involved with them. I, I swear I saw some type of a, a real estate office now. It used to be that you had to go to a garage to buy it. I believe now, as long as you've discovered it, you can then buy it online in the same way that you can buy trucks online after you have... I believe after you own five trucks, you can then buy trucks online. You don't need to go to a dealer. So they've swapped some things around like that. Sort of housekeeping stuff, you know. Not not super critical to gameplay, but all those little details put together change the way the game plays. Uh, what else is different? There's more trailers now. There's more cargoes now. Now we did... When I started the game up in 1.35, and it's beta. When I started the game up in 1.35... I had two red exclamation points. I had one red for Viper, uh, for the Viper 389, and one red for the Smarties wheel pack. So I tried it without, and just relentless game crashes. So I went ahead and started a new profile. Now I do have our profile that we built, our good profile with a million dollars and five garages and 10 employees. I do have that profile saved to the cloud. So once those mods patch up, we may start back on that profile, but here's the thing, and I joke about this, but this is a serious joking thing. It's all just driving a truck. I, I totally get it. I totally get it. When you put time and effort into building a save game, building a profile, building a character in an RPG, whatever it is, and then you lose that character, it's like, oh, damn it. All the time I put into that, all the, all the effort, oh, I've lost it all. So how do you get it back? Well, you just keep playing the game, which is what you were doing in the first place. So it's it's one of those things, you know, it's meaningless. It really is. It's just a game. And if we were on our old profile, we'd be driving a truck. And now that we're on our new profile, we're just driving a truck. So it's, uh, yeah, it's perspective, you know. There's a, 
comedian philosopher named Bill Hicks. He said, everything you think, everything you feel, everything you believe, it's just chemicals in your head. It's not real. And if you choose to feel or think or believe something different, that new belief is as valid as the previous one in that neither one of them were really very valid at all. They're just things that we think. They're things that we believe. So it's if you believe that losing your profile is a big deal, then it's a big deal. And if you choose to believe, eh, who cares? Then really, who cares? So it's it's one of those things. If you're new to the channel and you're wondering, like, well, this is a funny thing to talk about when you're playing a truck sim. It is. It is. But that's how we do it here. We talk about uh, all kinds of stuff. And we talk about a little philosophy. And that is definitely... A philosophical take on life is that uh, how you feel about something is entirely up to you. It really, really is. So, how do I feel about 1.35? I like it. I like it. I, and, you know, I, let me preface this by saying I like SCS. I like Pavel. I've never met the man. I don't know him personally. We've never even traded emails. But from what I know about him, he seems like a solid cat. And I like SCS. And I really, really love Truck Sim, which... I have to say, ATS and ETS are sort of moving toward a kind of a fusion, you know what I'm saying? Because they run the same everything now, they've, they've both been brought up to the same status, you know? So they're they're more or less parallel. 1.35 for ETS will be out probably within the next couple weeks, whatever. And it'll break pro mods, <laughs> but so it goes. Uh, it's the same sim. And when they bring in, you know, Japan Truck Sim or, or Indian Truck Sim or whatever, wherever they go in the world next, you know what I'm saying. It's just going to be Truck Sim at some point. And then when you boot the game up, you decide what region of the world you want to go to. But that'll be, I, I think when it becomes, this is speculation. I have no uh, advanced knowledge of this, but I think at some point it will just become Truck Simulator 3. And when you start the game you will pick the dlc that you want to go into and that will take you to the region of the world that you're familiar with whether it's ats ets or some new place etc so having said all that i i like scs i like pavel and i love this sim so what i'm going to say right now might seem negative but it is not it is not it is meant in an extremely positive way and my question is where is this game going and how quickly can it get there because in the same way that getting a 4K TV makes it clear to you that there is some programming that you really don't want to see in 4K. You know what I'm saying? Remember the first, uh, I don't know, first maybe six months, six to 12 months of 4K. And if you saw something that was not made for 4K on a 4K TV, it's like, oh God, I've burned my retinas. That is horrible. It took a minute for people that make programming to get caught up. And to be able to adjust things in their in their production and their post-production so that it looked good on a 4K TV. What I'm saying is, right out of the gate, 4K TV exposed flaws in things. The game is playing very crisp and very fast right now. My settings are on high and a couple things on ultra. It is, I wouldn't say it's as good as it can get. I mean, there are people that can, that can jack this game to all ultra and 400% scaling, no problem. I can't quite do that but I can make the game look pretty good. And here's, here's the downside, and this is positive, it really is. This is a positive thing that I'm about to say. As good as you can make the game look, it never really looks that good anymore in comparison to other games in 2019. Truck Sim, I love you, but we are getting to a point where we can no longer pretend that this game is not being grandfathered in. And I want this sim to succeed. I want there to be a truck sim 3.0. I really do want it to succeed. I love it. It is one of my favorite sims. I want it to succeed. But I am concerned. I really am. And I worry that SCS has, has come to a model where they cannot really bring new players to this game because it, it just does not have the pop, the visual appeal of a 2019 game. And so what they're doing is, I mean, you can get this game essentially for free. If you're willing to wait for a couple weeks, you can find this game on sale on Steam for five bucks. If you're selling a game like this for five bucks, you have, in marketing, we talk about penetration and saturation. When you're selling this game for five bucks, everybody who's going to buy this game has bought it. And you're really looking for people that are just going to kind of buy it because, hey, you know, it's five bucks. Who cares? I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just a fact. 
everybody who's bought this game is going to buy it. So how is SCS making money? Well, they're selling DLC. Okay, that's a viable model. And there's no reason you can't design a game, release a game, and keep it going for three or four or five years, right? Selling DLC. But at some point, at some point, you need to modernize it. This game is running on a 20-year-old engine. Physics are, well, the physics are... I don't want to say bad enough. I'm trying to be positive. But there, an argument can be made that this game does not even have physics. It's just got a bouncy camera. But the physics that we're getting used to in race sim and various other sims that are so fluid and so uh, dynamic and so real and crisp, this game is going to need physics at some point. How's that going to happen on a 20-year-old engine? And et cetera, et cetera. You see what I'm getting at? So, at what point is SCS going to be able to commit resources to, rather than developing a new DLC, at what point will they be able to commit resources to developing a new game? And I don't have an answer for that, and it concerns me. It really does, and I'm not being an ass when I say that. I'm not being cute. I, hmm, I don't know how much longer we as sim gamers can fire up this game and be okay with it. Even with, I don't have any graphics mods running right now. In particular, I don't have any graphics mods running in this profile. I don't have any mods running because we we just patched it up and, and in the interest of stability, zero mods. This is absolute, absolute base game. So no graphics mods. You can pretty up the game with some graphics mods. You can throw in reshade, do some things. But you know what I'm saying? There's only so many different condiments you can put on a hamburger. At the end of the day... It's still just a hamburger, you know? You, you can't make it a steak by putting a little salt and pepper on it. You can make it better, but you can't change what it fundamentally is. So I hope, I really hope, that there is a plan afoot at SCS to modernize this game, that there would be a, a Truck Sim 3.0 on the horizon. I hope so. I really do, because I love it. Uh, and as far as 1.35, yeah, I mean, I can't believe how fast and crisp the game is playing. And I don't know if they tightened up anything else as far as the render. And we are out in the desert right now. But even when we were in LA, we were over 60 FPS with the settings pretty, pretty high. So I'm definitely pleased with that. And I think the DX11 is making a difference. Uh, some of the other things, the housekeeping stuff, I like that. Uh, the, the trailers, I have to say, and I said this in an ETS video, the trailers are surprisingly quite, quite enjoyable. More so than I thought they would be. Because, you know, trailers, who cares? Ah, it's just a box on wheels. Not as much fun as building a truck, but it has been. It really has been. So the fact that they're adding more trailers and more cargoes, very, very cool. And, I mean, for me, as an American, 100% patriotic American, it is awesome that they are building out America. And I do hope they go up into Canada and down into Mexico. I mean, it's... American truck simulators, so you figure we're just going to flesh out, you know, 50 states. We got Washington, we'll get we'll get Idaho going, and then the Rocky Mountain states, and we'll start to go through Texas and work our way up the East Coast. And you you get what I'm saying? We could, we could, but there's no reason why we couldn't also go up into Vancouver after Washington, up into uh, BC. We can't go down into Mexico, you know. It's uh, maybe it will at some point be North American truck simulator, but. In the meantime, I'm really pleased with the way the game is filling out uh, on the ATS side, comparable to ETS. So, yeah, I, I have nothing to complain about 1.35. And as far as it, you know, breaking mods, eh, would I like to see them roll out a spring and a fall patch on more of a schedule? Yeah, I definitely would. I definitely would. I think they are moving as quickly as they can and that keeps the patch schedule sort of uh, uh, impromptu, you know what I mean? They release when they can. They test when they can rather than releasing on a schedule. But I would prefer, honestly, I would prefer that they release on a schedule so that we can anticipate a little better and also so mod bankers can anticipate a little better. And I understand that a, a very simple workaround for that is just opt out of opt out of uh, beta. And for something like the, the Viper 389, what I'm told is that Viper only updates that truck after a patch.
patch has gone into full release. He does not update on beta because it's still too dynamic. He only wants to update once and release. So, you know, as far as that mod being broken, if I don't want that to be the case, just opt out of the beta and when the game patches to 1.35 proper, mods will follow along with it and I will never have to go through this broken phase. So when I when I say I wish they were on a schedule, there is there is definitely a solution on my end, something that I can very quickly and very simply do, which is just to opt out. But you know me. I like new stuff. I like I like them uh, them toys. So yeah, no complaints about 1.35 as a patch. My only beef, if I had any, would be those two things. That there is no schedule and, and my concerns about where the sim is going as a franchise and and just a realization every time I fire this sim up it's getting harder and harder for me to unsee the sort of uh, early 2000s look that it has and I love it so much you know I want it to uh, I want it to survive and I want it to Thrive. I don't want to be playing this game in five years and have it look like this, you know, and, and know that I'm just uh, playing it because I'm loyal, not necessarily because it, it really blows my mind every time I fire it up. And there are games like that that I have. There are games that every time I look at them, I am just really in awe of what I'm seeing or what I'm doing. And I think there is, we need to meet developers in the middle on that. As consumers, as gamers, we need to be realistic in our expectations. But I think developers need to be real with themselves about the fact that the people that give them money, we as consumers, we have expectations. So we'll meet in the middle on that. And I think I think we'll be okay. As far as what the future holds for this franchise, I don't know. But I, I really want to be optimistic because I love it, man. I love it. Arguably my favorite sim. And particularly, I love that it got dark as we're playing because this has got to be my favorite thing about truck sim is just driving at night oh man i love it i love it and you know what i'll tell you something else too when you get up north of 60 fps you have no control lag you know when you go when you go absolutely to the other end of the spectrum you may this may be familiar to you but when you get down below about eh, for me it's about 20 fps i start to think of it like you're you're kind of driving between the frames even though that's a it's kind of a, a minute difference when you get below a certain fps it's almost like the changes that you need to make to the vehicle in this case one of them could like land between frames if that makes sense so you sort of need to anticipate and I guess if you if you take it all the way to the absurd and think about like one FPS, just as an example, if you were trying to drive a vehicle at one FPS, you'd need to be doing a lot of guessing as far as what was going to be happening between frames to anticipate, right? You see what I'm saying? So it's never that bad. But even when you get down to, for me, like I said, about 20 FPS, I start feeling like I'm sort of driving between the frames. And then the opposite of that is when you're up wow, well above 60 FPS, it just gets so buttery smooth, and the truck is so responsive, and, and just feels really fluid, it's like you can almost feel the weight of it, so FPS is not always just a, a vanity thing, or just a, like a random trophy, you know, I know some people that, that say I, they will not play any game below 120 FPS, man, I can't even see the difference between 60 and 120, and the, an argument can be made that nobody can, but that's cool, if if 120 FPS is your is your basement, that's your your jumping off point. That is totally cool, man. You do you. To me, that's sort of trophy number. 60 is my goal at any given time, and never below 30, if possible. But when when we do get into the the higher FPS, it's more than just like I said, a, a trophy or a, an arbitrary number, it really can make a difference in the gameplay. And right now we are just, even with lights on, and I'm, I hadn't even really thought about that, but as it got dark and as we turned on lights, no drop in FPS effect will test it up here. Because that was, uh, you know what I'm talking about. 
in this game, when you throw your lights on, you can sometimes see a, a pretty solid drop. Now, the other thing we do, I can't yet because I don't have the level to do it, but when we level up and get some additional... Here we go. Get some additional uh, nodes on the truck to add parts. I'm going to throw two mirrors on the front, the two fender mirrors, and see if that still kills frame rate as it did. And then what would the other thing be? I guess we'll have to go to Las Vegas because Las Vegas is probably the worst city on this map for FPS. So what we'll do is we'll try to go to Las Vegas daytime, nighttime. And I can even jack the rain probability, right? Make it rain. Make it rain? Yeah. So essentially what we'll do is we'll try to go to Las Vegas, which is the worst FPS city on the map. We'll put two fender mirrors on the truck and then we'll drive at night with lights on and we'll make it rain. That is, to me, that would be like the, the all-time nightmare scenario for FPS and we'll see how DX11 handles that. If it, nobody do anything crazy. Perfect. We'll see if we, uh, if we do okay. Now, right now we are dropping off a little bit. Okay, we're at uh, 55. Turn these lights off. Yeah, yeah, we get a we get a slight bump. Yeah, we get a slight bump when we turn the lights off. No, no problem, not a big deal. And we get uh, we get a slight bump when we pull into a city. But we're our, I'd, I'd say we're probably. 8 to 10 FPS higher than we have been at any point in the past. And I attribute that to not just the fact that I'm not running any mods, but DX11 and some other changes that they made. Because none of the mods that we ran really affected FPS, I don't think. Now, I mean, maybe the, maybe the Jazzy Cats packs. Right. Um, we don't own a trailer, so let's go ahead and pull this thing in here and give us a little overhead view. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Look at this guy fixing his bobcat late night. He's either fixing it or stealing it. Could be either. This guy up here, what's he doing? He's counting bricks. Two, three, four, five. Ah, close enough. Right. Well, that chrome really goes to gray. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Right. Now try to jackknife this thing. Maybe not the approved technique. But you know what? I have a lot of techniques that aren't approved. Beautiful. Straighten her out. Beautiful. Neutral. Like that. And then we need to... I'm trying to remember how to turn the truck off now. There we go. That kills the, the ignition, but the, the power stays on. Yeah. Okay, cool. So we'll unload. And see how we did. We may level up already. We tend to level up pretty, pretty fast at the lower levels. How do we do? Boom. Let's see. Current company job offers. I don't think I've ever taken these. Never, ever. Let's see. Uh, so I already picked high value cargo. We got our first promotion. Let's do, um, do hazmat. Yeah, let's do hazmat. Cool. We'll apply that. There you go. We got an email. Special transport is available now. Beautiful. There you have it. There you have it, folks. Thanks for stopping back to check out The Portable Gamer. Thanks for joining us for the first episode of American Truck Simulator on the 1.35 patch. And we'll see you next time. Take care now.